Hello friends, I'm Marjina Sultana, an assistant professor from Interpresta Law College, Greater Noida. In this video, we will discuss delegated legislation. Delegated legislation is also known as subordinate legislation in administrative law. It has been defined by MP Jen. Let's see what how he defines. According to MP Jen, the term delegated legislation is used in two different senses. In the first sense, it is to exercise the legislative power by subordinate agents. Or, in the second sense, the subsidiary rules themselves which are made by the subordinate authority in pursuance of the powers conferred on it by the legislature. So what is the first sense? In the first sense, legislative de uh, delegated legislation is the exercise of legislative power by the subordinate agents. What is the legislative power? Who exercises the legislative power? It is the legislature who are, who are conferred with the legislative power by the constitution. So the legislature is the supreme lawmaking body. But delegated legislation, in the delegated legislation, this power of lawmaking is exercised by the subordinate agents instead of legislature. So this exercise of the legislative power by subordinate agents that is subordinate to the legislature is called the delegated legislation. It can be understood easily if we try to understand the literal, literally. So to delegate means to pass powers and in terms of legislation it means to pass power to make laws to somebody else. So Delegated, delegated legislation refers to all the lawmaking which takes place outside the legislature. The, the rules made by the legislature, uh, the subordinate agents. In the second sense, the, the delegated legislation refers to the rules made by, the, by that power, the legislative power conferred by the legislature. So, we can understand delegated legislation as the, as the, those, it, it refers to the, all the lawmaking which takes place outside the legislature and is generally expressed as rules, regulations, bylaws, orders, schemes, etc. And these rules are also called, are also understood as delegated legislation. The well-established principle of delegated legislation is that the legislature must lay down the guidelines, the principle of policy for the authority to whom powers to make subordinate legislation is entrusted. What does it mean? It means that the legislature or the parliament should provide the guidelines or provide the framework according to which delegated legislation will be made. So, parliament passes a law, passes a parent act which is a, which is a primary legislation, including providing a framework which contains the background to law. What does Parliament want to achieve? So, but this parent act or legislation, uh, primary legislation does not provide all the details because these detail, details have to be filled by the delegated legislation. So, what's missing from, from this primary legislation is the detail. A large number of laws in parliament are just a framework, providing a, you know, containing a sort of basis. So, these 
what happens in delegated legislation is that this detail is put on by somebody other than the parliament. What's the object, the objective, the important object of this principle is that any legislation by such delegation should be according to the purposes as let down in the act. Parliament or we can say legislature which have the primary uh, we can say constitutional authority to, to make the laws to legislate the laws can pass over this power to make laws to some some other authority but it should provide the guidelines the principle is that parliament has to provide the guidelines the framework framework outlining the objectives guidelines which has to be followed by the supported authority while making a uh, delegated secondary legislation. There are three main types of delegated legislation. The first main type is statutory instruments. These are created by the government ministers and they are about technical expertise. The second area is orders and council. It deals with the emergency and the new situation. And the third types of delegated legislation is bylaws. They are created by the local authority. These, these are geographical legislation. So they got ge geographical specialities. Factors responsible for the growth of delegated legislation are number one, pressure on parliament. State activities are expanding in today's modern welfare state. It requires law, but the parliament has no time to make laws to make laws to meet these requirements so parliament has met certain policies which allows the subordinate authority or we can say executives to make laws accordingly the next reason is technicality there are certain subject matters which requires technicality which requires experts or we can say professionals in such fields but the parliament are not experts so the power is given to experts to deal with these technical problems like taxation laws gas atomic energy drugs etc the next important reason for the growth of delegated legislation is flexibility. It is not possible for the parliament to look after each contingency while making laws, while making an enactment. And for this reason, certain provisions are required to be added. Parliamentary laws is not perfect. It needs amendment sometimes. But the process of amendment is very slow as well as difficult. It's a cumbersome process. Thus, the process of delegated legislation helps the executive authority to make laws according to the situation, according to the needs of the time. So in the Let's take the case of bank rate or policy regulation, etc. In such case, delegated legislation help a lot in forming the law. Another reason is 
emergency. At the time of emergency, it's, it is not possible for the legislative to provide an urgent solution to meet the situation. In such case, the only remedy available is delegated legislation. Therefore, in the time of times of war or other national emergency, the executives are vested with more powers to deal with the situation. And the other reason is the complexity of the modern administration. With the increasing complexity in the modern administration and the, as the function of the state being expanded uh, to economic and social sp spheres too, so there is a need to shift to new reforms and pro providing it, it needs, there is a need for providing more powers to different authorities on some specific and suitable occasions so that immediate actions can be taken so the there is a need to provide the administration with enough power modern administrative administration is complex so we need the laws are complex to need to deal with this complexity administrative authorities needs power to deal with it so the power is given to administration to delegate laws in some suitable occasions or specific occasions so for immediate and suitable actions to be taken there has been an immense growth of delegated legislation in every country all over the world and being that important and useful it becomes a known separable part of the modern administrative era so without delegation so de delegated legislation is very important without it we cannot have a administration an effective administration and it's not possible for the legislator to make all the laws without the help of the uh, supporting an authority so there was the need to develop to develop the process or policies where uh, executives can make delegated legislation. Now, it will be easier for us to understand the advantages of the delegated legislation. Delegated legislation saves time for the legislature. It allows for flexibility and it provides expert opinion when it is required in legislation. It is useful and advantageous when as the parliament is not always present in the session. Delegated legislation is used as an experiment. It is used on experimental basis. It is resorted to use in a situation of emergency as it provides an urgent solution to emergency. It can be easily settled down with consulting the required party of the case. Today we have discussed the concept of delegated legislation and its principles, the types of delegated legislation, its reasons for the growth of growth and the, and the advantages. In the next video, we will study control of delegated legislation. 
थैंक यू